Hey guys, this is the Ikeda Game Dev here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up a custom collision mesh for your claymore to basically trigger by. So here I have my claymore that I made, and here I have my collision shape. So it's basically going to be this, as well as I have my actual collision. So that'll be, well, they're just duplicates of one another. So when I import it into Unreal, you can see here is my shape, and the green is my collision. So this is roughly what I want. So if I go to my Claymore, and I add a static mesh, which is our Claymore collision, you can see this is basically going to be my trigger. So it's going to go all the way out to here, and it's going to cover this somewhat big of an area. And that's, like I said, that's roughly what I want. So now we need to set that up. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our Claymore here. I'm assuming I'm going to have to close down the editor so it doesn't crash. Close out a Blender as well. We're going to change our Claymore overlap to, well, a static mesh component. So if we head back up here, here we have our box component. And that's going to be still called our Claymore overlap component. And just kind of leave it like so for now. So let's go ahead and run it. Okay, once we're back in the editor, let's go to our Claymore. And here we have our Claymore Overlap, which is currently nothing. Eh, great. Is it going to do one of these annoying complaint? Let's see. Let me just do this as a test really quick. All right. Yes, it is. Not entirely sure how to resolve that. Uh, let me see if reloading it'll work. So now we got Yeah, that didn't work at all. But anyways, it takes like two seconds to actually set up. So what we're going to do is I'm going to grab my Claymore, move it to Claymore. And if I drag it into the world, I can then right click on my Claymore and replace selected actor with my Claymore. Then now that we have that, go ahead and file, save all. We can delete our Claymore. And let's actually rename this to BP Claymore. We can give it our mesh, like before, as well as set the Claymore overlap to the Claymore collision, and simply compile. And there we are. So the only thing we want to do now is reset our Niagara system. So there we go. Let's make sure it still works. And it's going to be kind of a pain because we also have collision. So we're going to have to fix a couple of things. So for now, I'm going to leave this visible. But one thing you actually can do that, in my opinion, would make this a little bit nicer. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate. What is Control W not duplicate anymore? Oh, it's Control D. M underscore Claymore overlap. If you can make a somewhat transparent material act as kind of like the danger zone. So I'm going to give it a value of red. And I want to make this, instead of being opaque, I want to make it translucent. So here we can give it a different opacity value. So like 0.2 gives it just a light shade of red. So what we want to do is for our Claymore, go ahead and move that over to Assets. For our Claymore Collision, can set it to our Claymore overlap. So it's this light, you know, kind of red. And that allows just to have some kind of visual aid of where the overlap is until we actually start the game. So that's how that's going to work. Now let's go ahead and set up the settings that we need. So for starters, generate overlap events is true by default. And we have our collision preset, which is set to block all by uh, block all dynamic. We want that to be no collision. So if we compile and hit play, we should be able to walk through it, which we now can. Problem being, we're not getting our function to fire. So if we head down, we still have all these functions here. So on component begin overlap, let's print out the string and just make sure that it does trigger, which it does not. So we have a problem elsewhere. So we need to try to find where that may be. So because we have no collision, 
we also have no overlap. So that's going to be a minor problem. So we want to go to overlap all. So instead of blocking us at all, we instead overlap. So now when I hit play, we should print our string. Like so, we print out hello, and we also fell to the ground. So we walk through it. Second we touch it, we go poof. And that's the result that we want. So what we need to do is we need to set our collision preset to be overlap all by default. We want to make sure generate overlap events is on by default, as well as we want to set the collision or the uh, mesh here to be hidden in game. So let's go ahead and set that up. So we have our Claymore overlap. Let's go ahead and set the uh, profile. So set collision profile name, F name. That's going to be overlap all. Let me just confirm overlap all, and I can set that back to default. Then we have generate overlap events. So generate, set generate overlap events, set that to true, just to make sure. And then lastly, we have one more. So that's going to be our hidden in game. So if we search for hidden, you will see we have hidden in game. So right now we can see the red, but when I hit play, you no longer see it. And of course it's blocking it. So we want to make sure that that is set to true as well. So claim or overlap, set hidden in game. We're going to set that to true. And we don't have any children, so it doesn't really matter. There's nothing for it to parse through, but either way, I believe it does that by default. Now let's watch live coding break. So I'm wondering if it only has issues when it does it in the constructor. Is it going to play? Okay, we're still blocked, so I guess these settings did not take effect because none of those show back for the default. So we're going to go ahead and save and restart the editor. Okay, let's go ahead and reopen our asset, or blueprint. And here we have our Claymore overlap. So if we scroll down, we're set to overlap all by default and generate overlap events. And we are set to hidden in game. So now our defaults, when we play, we no longer see it, but we generate our overlap events and we ragdoll and die. So that's pretty much it. Uh, the only thing I have left really to show you guys would be in the next video, and this is more of an optional one. And that'll be for like the team setup because I want to show you how to kind of work around the module because we don't want the module to rely on our Claymore tutorial character class in any way. We want this to be, like I said, it's a module, so you want to keep it contained to its own self. That's really kind of the only way I can think to explain it. But yeah, uh, that's going to be all for this series. Again, the last video is optional, but if you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description below, where I have a Teen Deathmatch series and a couple others. And if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to hop in my Discord and I'll try to help you out. So, I will see you in the last video or this one. I don't care.